Hi, I'm Kyle Claus, and we are filming this for Regalia Magazine. So originally I thought that I was gonna end up doing something in front of the camera and telecommunications was the major that it was called at the time for doing, whether it was editing or camera work or sound or being in front of the camera. So I ended up majoring in telecommunications right away upon getting into college and that was, uh, yeah, that was the, the, the major that you went into if you were thinking of doing something in front of the camera, like sports, anchoring, news, or even weather. My parents wanted me to be a weatherman. So I knew deep down I felt like I wanted to do something in front of the camera. And when I got to the school and started taking classes, I really didn't vibe with a lot of the people in them. Just looking back, it was kind of, um, you know, adolescent, I was just, you know, a lot of the people weren't kind of dressed in the same as me, weren't having the same outlook. I mean, honestly, I was one of the only frat guys in and felt like, you know, being like more of a uh, normal, coming from the background I came from, which was playing sports and just being a people person. Um, you know, a lot of these people were kind of like techie, more techie types and, and stuff like that. Um, so I didn't really vibe with them right off the bat. And I think I quickly realized that I didn't necessarily want to just be in front of the camera to be in front of the camera per se. Um, and then I ended up trying to, not really knowing what I wanted to do, so I switched majors. And I went into, I, my, my dad was always very political. Um, he was always interested in politics growing up. He was always talking politics. And I really never had the, I never had the confidence to know what I was talking about. So I didn't really have an opinion on anything. And I really believe that as a person, if you don't know something and you kind of want to know something about it, there's so much information out there these days. Just go out and learn about it so that you can speak, educate, so you can educate yourself on it. Um, I ended up going into this because I asked a couple professors and they said it was a very general major that I could do basically anything when I wanted to, when I, uh, you know, graduated. So I also quickly realized once I was in that major that I really didn't want to do anything involving politics. Politics were, I realized that nothing got done on opposite ends of the spectrum. It was more towards the middle and, you know, just being able to now, something that I might be interested in down the line, uh, once I'm done with all my other stuff, maybe like an Arnold move, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, maybe you know a second act of life being running for some kind of office, that could potentially, I like bringing people together and, and communicating and having each other kind of coming to an agreement and seeing each other's side. But that being said, I ended up just going, following through with this, becoming a political science, major with a minor in electronic media, which is what telecommunications turned um, from, named from uh, telecommunications to electronic media, and just realized that I wanted to graduate and just have that. Now, what I did find out doing that was that I really wanted to, I did love finding other people's, you know, inhabiting other people's lives and being, what I realized is that I wanted to do everything and I wanted to try everything. And that's what ultimately led me to acting. I couldn't decide on one thing that I wanted to do because I wanted to experience it all, it all. And that's ultimately what led me to act and be an actor and just realize that I wanted to be able to step into each person's shoes and without judgment. And that's what being an actor ultimately has to do. You have to be able to inhabit a character without judgment of that character. And see it from their point of view. So that's what led me to act acting. When did I feel acting was for me? Well, um, when I was in college, uh, the, first, the first film that I ever did was an independent feature named Misdirected, and I was playing the ladies' man on campus named Russ, and I got to grow a sweet mustache, and um, I kind of caught the bug from there. That was my first film I ever auditioned for. I got a role in it. And from that point on, 
it kind of just started snowballing. I um, I remember thinking that I wanted to see how a movie was made. Originally, that was my it was such a mystery to me. And I'm talking about like a studio film. So I wanted to see how a studio film was made. And the film Annapolis came around with James Franco and Tyrese Gibson. And I got onto that and I got work as an extra for about two weeks while I was in college. So I was skipping school once in a while, skipping classes to be able to go to, um, to work for the day. And I remember I had to shave my head because I was a Navy plebe and um, I never did that before. So it was just a cool experience and I got to learn new things as a Navy plebe, uh, you know, a, a cadet in the Navy would, would learn. So I got to learn these new skills and these new things and I was like, wow, I got to see, you know, these actors, these A-list actors such as Dave, James Franco and Tyrese Gibson and how a movie was starting to be made. Like I could piece it together from being on set and it was kind of like, film school and it was a crash course in it and I was getting paid for it and I just became a um, you know I, I became friendly with a lot of the you know crew members and they ended up wavering me a couple times which means that if you could get three waivers you could get into the union and I ended up getting three waivers on on the on the day days that I worked and ended up joining the union right away. And I figured I was like 21 years old. I was already in the union. I figured I was way ahead of the curve for most actors. Um, and that's how I really got started. I have trained with some of the top acting coaches in the world, world renowned acting coaches. And some of the things I learned, well, arriving into New York City, I quickly realized that I didn't know what I was doing and I was trying to understand it. I was, I have the, the type of personality that needs to know what they're doing and be sure of it. And um, I remember the first class, one of the first classes I got into, um, I looked up, there was an actor kind of from where I grew up near my area and I, I uh, saw on IMDb that they studied with a certain coach. So I sought out the coach and I got into the acting class and she taught me a lot and she, Honestly, it got a little messy. I felt like at first I had to break down to be able to build back up. And um, what kind of, you know, I had to first be able to just break down my, you know, as, as a self-consciousness of, of having that fourth wall there, you know, and, and being able to perform without being conscious of that. You know, you're conscious of the audience, but just not, thinking of them being there. And then being able to inhabit the life instead of perform, just being able to inhabit the life. And you know, one thing that stood out was uh, a saying, it's not the lines, it's the life. So meaning like, I was so fixated on kind of like what the words were, what I had to say and what my lines were. And, and it's more about the life of the character, what they're going through and how they're experiencing it and kind of doing it as if, you know, as if Kyle was this character um, and in the circumstances. And then the next biggest thing where, you know, I, these are just general kind of things that I went through was, was to be able to, was, was really realizing how to break down a scene. And once I learned that, that was kind of like a game changer where a light switch went off, where it was just like finding out the, the one, what is in a character, being able to break down the scene for everything that you're in for what the objective of the character is, what the obstacles in that character's way is of getting there, but being able to, what actions they take to be able to get to their objective. And once I realized that, it was like I became a student. Um, and then the next step was to be able to go even further than that and when I was in a scene being able to, able to you know forget everything forget all of that work that I just did so that the audience doesn't see the technique and just think of nothing else but my moment before where I'm coming from and going in and entering the scene and dropping it all and just trusting that it's all there that all the work that I did was there and just being in the moment and really listening so it's always an ongoing process but um, those are some of the major things that I've learned What was one of my first jobs in the industry? Well, one of my first jobs in the industry, other than 
Annapolis after that was this movie called Invincible. Now this was huge for a couple reasons. One, it was starring Mark Wahlberg. And Mark Wahlberg was one of my inspirations growing up. He was such a, his early work, Fear Boogie Nights, he was such a badass in those that I kind of, coming from where I came from, not really, you know, a lot of people doing the acting thing, um, I just could relate to that a lot and was like, wow, you know, if this guy is, can have a career like this with these kind of roles, I wanna, you know, get into, uh, you know, I wanna follow in his footsteps. So that was huge, um, just in that respect. Two, it was a period piece about the Philadelphia Eagles, which the Philadelphia Eagles were, I mean, they, I'm a diehard fan. I went to the Super Bowl two years ago uh, to watch them beat the New England Patriots and Tom Brady. Um, but my grandpa, my dad, we used to sit around, you know, memories of just drinking beer and watching the football game and, you know, being able to relate uh, that way and having those memories. Um, three, I got paid a lot on it. And as a college kid, being able to make that much money at that time was, was huge. And then four, getting to know Mark on this film. I was one of the ball boys, so I was in charge of having the ball and, you know, being able to take care of that ball in between the, the shoots and in between shooting. And um, Mark, you know, we had a couple catches and it led to me, you know, walking by his trailer at the end of the day and him, you know, me going up and introducing myself and then him saying, oh yeah, hey, I'm Mark. And I was thinking in my head, well, of course you're, you know, I know who you are. But he's like, hey, you wanna have a couple, you know, uh, have a beer and uh, some food? So I, uh, you know, I ended up having uh, hanging around and that subsequently led me to a couple other films that he did um, which were The Happening and The Lovely Bones where I was his stand-in so I even got to work closer with him and realize how he worked see the intricacies of the set and it was like a crash course in film acting and it was just amazing to do that as a kid in college. How did I feel when I got my first role and did I feel like I was cut out for it? Yes, well, I, I felt amazing when I first got my, when I got my first role. I, there's something where I always felt like I was at home once I was on set. It's weird, I always just, when I was working, I always felt just at peace being on set and feeling like that was where I was supposed to be. And I felt like, from the start, you know, I just started catching the bug. I started out just kind of wanting to see how a movie was made and then getting there and then being more interested and it pulling me more in. And being able to do some of the early things that I did and having some of the early experiences from working on Invincible and seeing the director Justin Lin, who ended up directing all the Fast and Furious um, movies, just seeing how he worked and then going on to The Happening and working in close proximity with M. Night Shyamalan and then his DP, uh, which was Tak Fujimoto. Some of these are the best in the business. The, the world renowned at their job and um, the, the, working at the highest level. And being able to know and learn from these guys did a couple things. First, it demystified the process for me. I was able to understand what they were doing and hear what they were doing without technically being able to do their job, but just being able to understand and hear how they were relating to the actors and talking to the actors, which made me feel like I could do it at this level. And then, but at the same time, you know, it demystified the, the movie making process for me, but it also, there, there is such an art in it that it, it didn't lose its magic. It didn't lose its magic at all, but it made me realize that I could do it. I could do it at a high level. And you know, when it starts out as just a, a process of seeing how a movie was made, because I thought, I, I was always talking to my friends about it, saying like, I, I can't understand it, I can't fathom it. And then you get there and you start realizing how it's made. You actually even have more of an appreciation for it because you learn how it's done and you see the, the the amazing abilities of these people that, that make a great film. And um, that's kind of how I felt when I first got it and how I still feel this day. And I just, I'm extremely happy 
to be in this business. What was one of my favorite roles and why? Well, one of my favorite roles was definitely on The Last OG. I can remember when I auditioned for it, I did it a couple different ways. And I thought since it was TBS, you know, Tracy Morgan, it was a little lighthearted. Um, I remember going in initially and practicing it as a more aggressive cop. And then the casting director having me do it a different way. So when I got to set, I was thinking, okay, well, they had me do it a different way. They probably hired me because of that different way. It was a TBS, so it's a softer cop. And um, so I went and when we did the rehearsal, Tracy was there and I, I did it the way that I figured, you know, they had me do it in the audition. And I did it a little softer. So when I got done, I was walking by before we started filming the actual um, filming of it. Tracy pulled me aside and he was like, basically telling me cops don't play like that. And he's like, you know, he, like telling me that he knows cops that are much more aggressive than that. And I, I actually agreed with him. I was like, I know exactly what you're talking about. He's like, you know, you think Pacino would do it like that? <laughs> basically telling me, you know, I know what I can do and I know what I'm supposed to do. So play it like I'm, uh, like I need to. And from that point on, I was like, I got you. And I remember going to, you know, when we first filmed and I played it the way I felt that a cop would actually play, you know, they don't play around and um, especially in the Bronx and, uh, and you know, <laughs> that's where we were at. So we were filming and as I got done, he pulled me to the side and he kind of gave me a pound and just like, that was it, man. So I really was appreciative of that and I felt like that was a, um, a great testament and uh, just something I'll remember forever and that was one of my best roles. What do I wish to achieve with my own production house? Well, I wrote a script a little while ago with a friend of mine and I realized that now it's being shopped around and it's starting to gain some traction. So I felt that it was a good time since when these projects become more serious and start getting made that I want to have a hand in that and I want to have my company ready to go and not be scrambling at the last minute because I feel that I'm going to really be able to bring something to the table as I'm you know from my business acumen to be able to have a hand in producing and ultimately that's where I want to get to anyway so I figured why not start right now um, and develop the company and just have a hand in producing my own projects. Now, I don't want to get into any kind of, you know, low budget type production. I really want to wait until these things start getting developed even stronger and then play a part in the producing of those in association to the other, other major producers. What was one of my major achievements in the industry? Well, you know, as you go through this industry, there are every different stop there's something new there's something there's a new barrier to break so when I was doing background it was about getting my first lines and that happened with daytime and then it was about doing daytime and then being able to break into prime time and then being able to break into prime time with a line or two on co-stars and then be able to work to something bigger and right before the pandemic hit I ended up working on a couple multiple episodes back to back of the blacklist so I could label that as a recurring so these are all different barriers and they're all different levels to get to and then you got to break the next level and one of my favorite and best you know best achievements in this industry was being able to get hired for the for Silicon Valley and flying to LA staying in a hotel remember driving the set in the first day and seeing the Hollywood sign in you know my forefront when I'm driving there and just thinking how surreal that was that I was actually getting paid a good amount of money for this and being a professional actor doing this and ultimately had my own stand-in on set there and was talking to them about what they need to do you know they were asking me questions about the business so that was one of my major achievements and you know this business is it's all about the journey it's all about the pursuit and it's not a destination on your vision board it's it's all about where the next journey is and that's what I love most about it.
So that's one of my major achievements in the industry and it keeps on keeping on and it keeps on going on. So here we go.